Welcome to Red Bud, Illinois, a tiny little town that is the center of the independent wrestling universe today. I'm Ben Simon. Welcome to another edition of St. Louis Wrestling in HD right here on YouTube. Our first match fe features the maniacal Mephisto against this man right here, Chase King. And earlier on tonight, actually just moments ago, Mephisto had a run-in with Billy McNeil. And we're going to show you footage of that um, here in just a moment. Now, Billy had come in and confronted, here we are right here, Billy McNeil came in and confronted Mephisto, and uh, he basically said, you ruined my moment back on October 1st when I won the IHW championship, and now I want you back. I want retribution, and I think he may have gotten it. You look right here. And the, the locker room emptied, uh, the entire roster out, referees, security people here, breaking these two up. There's Ace Hawkins going over the top rope to get to these two men, Billy McNeil and Mephisto, at each other's throats. And uh, you can bet we will be seeing these two meet up in the very near future. And if McNeil survives tonight, hopefully it will be for that IHW championship. Back to real time here, though. Mephisto on your left, King on your right. Chase King has been making great strides over, especially in St. Louis. But over in Illinois, uh, success remains to be seen. Mephisto, uh, this is kind of his world, his realm. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if you want more IHW, check out IHWrestling.net. Once again, this is Ben Simon. Mephisto is wailing away at Chase King in the corner. Snapmare into an abdominal stretch headlock here. Indeed, this is a wrestling move. Eric Davis is your referee. Should have been the nosebleed seats referee of the year in my opinion, but I'm just one man. The thing with Mephisto is he's not a technical wrestler, as you can see. He wants to take it to the outside as fast as possible, and he is. Chase King looks like, looked like he got knocked out with that shot on the canvas. That could be it. Not quite. Later on tonight, the main event will see the IHW Championship on the line as Billy McNeil will defend against Cameron Cage, the former champion, and this time it's a chain match. Man, look at this. Mephisto, he's holding King up there for quite a while. And there's only one way down. Coming up next, we have the IHW Invitational Finals. The IHW Invitational is quickly becoming one of the premier tournaments in Midwest independent wrestling. I can only think of a couple others that might be bigger than it at this point. It's a pretty big tournament. Eight men start. We have four single elimination matches in the first round. And then the four winners will meet in one match in the second round. It is a four-way elimination bout. And the winner will be the IHW Invitational winner, the champion. Uh, they will get the trophy, and they will have a guaranteed upcoming IHW championship match. I don't think we've seen Chase King get virtually any offense in this match yet, besides these blows right here, and Mephisto's just going to cut him off. And let's talk a little bit about what exactly happened back on October 1st, right here in Red Butt, actually. Uh, Billy McNeil defeated Cameron Cage for the IHW Championship. Oh, look at this. Look at this cross face here. Shades of the Crippler. And uh, Billy McNeil may have gotten the message here from Mr. Mephisto. Uh, and he better let this go or else Davis is going to disqualify him. All right, this should be a reversal. The question is, who can stop this man? Brutally disposed of Billy McNeil did Mephisto back on October 1st, and now 
Chase King under the belt of Lenny Mephisto. All right, the match is over. Well, this is just uncalled for right here. We're going to have a Celtic cross type. Bam! Ugh. A Celtic cross type maneuver indeed. As he spits on him and lets him know what's up. Fans will be right back here with Billy McNeil. Tonight's event is brought to you by MissouriWrestlingRevival.com. Well, so far, the V is rocking here in Redbud, Illinois. And later on tonight, we will see the chain match between Cameron Cage, the challenger, and the current IHW champion, Billy McNeil. Come on in, Billy. Well, that works, too. Billy, five months ago, Lenny Mephisto really took you apart after your big title win. He ruined your moment. Does that take you off your game plan at all tonight against Cameron Cage? Well, I'm not going to lie. It's going to be hard to keep my mind off of that, especially considering what that psychopath did to me. But you know what? I came so far and went through so much to win this belt. There's really nothing that can take my mind off of defending it. Cameron Cage, you're a great competitor. You know what? You could have a rematch. You could have two rematches. You could have a dozen rematches and pretend they're donuts for all I care. But I'm going to win every single one of them. That's the champ, Billy McNeil, and it's coming up later on tonight. One of the most anticipated matches in this company's history is about to happen. And while it's not the main event tonight, it definitely could be. And this is, this is co-main event status right here for the IHW Invitational Trophy and a future shot guaranteed at the IHW Championship, which is currently held by Billy McNeil, who we just talked to. Now this match is elimination style. To be eliminated, you have to be pinned or you have to be submitted. Jordan McIntyre on your left. In the background, Brandon Aarons in your foreground right there. Brandon Espinoza, the elitist. And in the right corner, Ace Hawkins. Well, excuse us while we take a brief survey to see who the fans really came out to see tonight. I think it's between the Brandons. And Ace and Jordan on top of the Brandons. This is not a team match, but it, they are taking it to them. Eric Davis, once again, your referee. The winner of this elimination match gets a future IHW championship match, guaranteed. And I don't even know if... You could try to call this one exactly. The action is going to be so fast and furious. Ace and Brandon in the ring. Espinoza and Ace Hawkins have a long history. Uh, the teacher and the student um, training partners for many years. Uh, they've traveled on the road together and they know all of the other's maneuvers. They've wrestled each other so many times. I would think that um, they have been, they have faced each other more than they have faced any other. Uh, respective opponent. Ace Hawkins to the eyes of Brandon Espinosa. Oh, McIntyre breaking his hand perhaps on that post right there. Ace Hawkins catches the post. It's, uh, I think we need to stay away from that post. 
And Brandon Espinoza is going high risk. Whoa! Baseball slide on to the outside of Ace Hawkins, chasing away Mr. Late Night. Mr. Late Night, of course, is the manager of Ace Hawkins, and he's also the manager of the challenger for the, tonight's main event, Cameron Cage. Stay in for that one. McIntyre going for the first pin here on Brandon Aarons. Now McIntyre, uh, uh, he has tasted uh, mixed results, kind of a mixed success, limited success to be quite honest here in Illinois. Uh, but he has qualified for two IHW Invitational Tournaments, uh, both of them. And uh, tonight could be his night. This is the stepping stone to the IHW Championship. I would be remiss to mention, if I forgot to mention, that Brandon Ahrens, who is laying flat on his back, only a two count. Brandon Ahrens, uh, this is his first night back. Uh, he has been gone from wrestling for about a year. He had problems with his back, was recommended not to wrestle again, and uh, he's been in the gym, apparently. He's good to go. But he wasn't looking too good there. The wrestling media in the area is all here tonight. Right there you see taking pictures is Kathy Hanner from the Body Slam radio show and soon to be TV show. And uh, Brian Kelly from Missouri Wrestling Revival is here as well. It was announced earlier tonight that IHW, Independent Hardcore Wrestling's next event will be on June 2nd, right back here in Redbud. This will be the sixth event in Redbud. Tonight is the fifth event. I guess Redbud, whoa, is becoming, quickly becoming the new home of Independent Hardcore Wrestling. Brandon Aarons trying to go for a suplex is reversed. Nice roll up there by McIntyre. Very underrated in his technical skills. And he's able to turn over Aaron's. And the Hollister model is in trouble. Boston grab. There is no reason for anybody to save him. And just as I just as I talk, Brandon Espinoza in with the comb over. That's his move. And McIntyre is at it. And we are down to three. Earlier tonight, McIntyre defeated Jonathan Zulu, the newcomer, to get into this tournament, and he is out now. Ace Hawkins, earlier tonight, he defeated Big Dave Osborne to advance to this match. The man in the pink on your left, Brandon Espinoza. He took down a very tough competitor in the great Malachi earlier to be in this match. And Brandon Aarons had his first match back, and that was up against Eric Allen. He defeated Eric Allen, and now he is in this match. Those were the qualifiers. And now we're seeing the former tag team, Babe Watch. We haven't seen them in a while. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing Babe Watch back. Brandon Aarons and Espinoza. Espinoza! Boot right to the chest of Ace Hawkins. And only a two, very surprisingly. You know, Ace Hawkins right now, you may have heard Chris Rodell, the ring announcer, earlier on say that he was the IHW Illinois champion, which is the um, second title to the IHW championship. Ace Hawkins is also the Missouri Illinois junior heavyweight champion out of South Broadway. In Central Illinois, he is the pro wrestling epic United States champion. Three belts. Brandon Espinoza knows about belts as well, though. At one time, just a few months ago, he was holding four different titles at the same time from many different areas, many different promotions.
And Brandon Espinosa is also the winner of last year's IHW Invitational, I do believe. Hoping for a repeat. Nice shoulder tackle there by Brandon Espinosa. Coming up next for the IHW Championship, it's a chain match. Billy McNeil will defend his IHW Championship against the former title holder, Cameron Cage, who will, of course, be accompanied by Mr. Late Night. Late Night's still out here, and so is Ace Hawkins. They have not been eliminated from this match. At least I, I don't think he was eliminated from this match. Indeed, wrestling returns to the V here in Red Bud, Illinois on Saturday night, June the 2nd. You don't want to miss it. For more information, ihwrestling.net. Whoa, big boot by Brandon Espinoza, and Aarons is down. Espinoza going up for perhaps a frog splash. That's it. Oh, no, an elbow. And he lands it right into the chest of Brandon Aarons. And Espinoza is setting up for the comb over, making his way to the back. It starts with a cobra clutch and then a leg sweep. But Aarons knows what's coming. And he's able to get out as fast as he can. Brandon Espinoza and Aarons is going up top. What will he do? It's a flying elbow or a forearm. You couldn't really tell. Only good for a two. Mr. Late Night on the outside talking to Ace Hawkins who is down on the floor. Speaking of which, Aarons down on the floor as well. Ace Hawkins with a blatant low blow on Brandon Espinoza. And it's over for Brandon Espinoza. We are down to two men. In the IHW Invitational Tournament, two men remain. Ace Hawkins on your right and on the outside. Brandon Aarons making his return to wrestling. And a Pele kick. So fast you could hardly see it. Only a two. What, you know, these two guys, you could not pick a better final for this tournament. And even though Ace Hawkins blatantly cheated to eliminate Brandon Espinoza, and, and there's another one. There is another low blow. You know, Ace Hawkins, you, you have to respect this kid for what he, what he can do in the ring. But this, this is... And Aarons kicks out! Aarons has kicked out! Brandon Aarons is still in this match. We have to respect Ace Hawkins, the Pro Wrestling Illustrated Rookie of the Year for 2011, for what he can do. But the fans revile him for what he does do. Brandon Espinoza is intervening. He's taking the belt. Ace Hawkins is going to have to win it clean. There it is. The Pele kick again. And Aarons goes for the cover and he's got it. a new chapter in his career. He is back in a big way. What a way to kick off his second career. And Luke Roberts in the ring to present him with the IHW Invitational Trophy. And now he will set up the gun against Billy McNeil or whoever the champion may be at our next event. 
And Espinoza is in the ring. A congratulatory sign of respect as the former Babe Watch members are feeling good tonight. Tonight's event is brought to you by MissouriWrestlingRevival.com, your stop for all things Midwest Wrestling. And it's main event time. Accompanied by Mr. Late Night, Cameron Cage. You'll notice Cameron, Cra Cameron Cage, rather, excuse me, is uh, dressed in street gear. This is not going to be a wrestling match, really. It's a chain match. To win, you have to drag your opponent around the ring and touch all four top turnbuckles in succession. Upon touching the fourth one, you win the match, and you will be the IHW champion. Now we talked to Billy McNeil earlier, the current IHW champion. Speaking of whom, here he is, coming out right now. A little off the wall, a little unorthodox, not your typical average professional wrestler. He's one of a kind from Thief River Falls, Minnesota. The IHW champ, Billy McNeil. Here he is. And he says he's worked so hard to get to this title. He's not going to let the memory of Mephisto back in October hinder his performance tonight. Cameron Cage wants that title back in the worst way. He was defeated for it at the last card five months ago. That one we've been talking about all night. Hey, Luke. Now, both men are actually joined uh, by the wrists with this chain. And this one it may not be for the faint of heart. You never know what you're going to see in these kinds of matches. I've seen people being hanged over the top rope with the chain. Definitely people busted open. You have to throw your traditional sense of wrestling out the window for a match such as this. Cameron Cage early on choking Billy McNeil with the chain. And this is, of course, no disqualification. Remember, we have Mr. Late Night right there. You can see him blatantly getting up on the apron and choking Billy McNeil with his hands. And there's nothing referee Davis can do about it. This is a fight. Billy McNeil was attacked with a fork back in October after his win over Cameron Cage back then. Mephisto entered the ring and ruined Billy's moment. The fans were cheering, everybody had smiles on their faces and Billy McNeil hoisted that title up above his head only to be attacked with a fork and had his forehead ripped open at the hands of Mephisto. But earlier tonight you saw that huge brawl break out. McNeil, while he's a wacky off the wall kind of guy he's not going to take this lying down he's nobody's bitch pardon the language well listen to the soundtrack for this match Now, I, I'm, 
I'm speculating on what we could see at the next card here in Redbud on June 2nd. Um, because remember, uh, Brandon Aarons, he just won the IHW Invitational. I don't know if he'll be getting a title shot on that night or if uh, perhaps we'll see a grudge match between McNeil and Mephisto. And uh, even if McNeil is even going to be having the belt that night. Well, that's the third low blow we've seen in this broadcast. Cameron Cage wrapping up that chain on the elbow and drops it right on McNeil. That hurts uh, when you have a chain wrapped around a body part. That'll hurt yourself, too, but more on the other guy. Dropping it right down into the chest of Billy McNeil. And this chain also is dangerous. A different dynamic about the chain. Uh, a different dynamic about the chain is that the uh, it, it'll get ripped. It'll get ripped around you. It'll get wrapped around you. You'll trip over it. You may fall out of the ring and get a body part stuck inside of the ring over the rope. It's a, a very dangerous situation. And Cameron Cage is getting tied up in the ropes as we speak. And McNeil, he's going for the tap. He's tapping the first turnbuckle. He got the second. But that's why you need to drag your opponent around the ring with you is because we're only looking at about a 10-foot chain. And this ring is larger than 10 feet. You're never going to be able to reach the furthest turnbuckle if you don't have your opponent near you. After both guys get tangled, McNeil. Oh. This one's going to get violent, folks. Oh, right into the post goes Cameron Cage. Head first. And Cage is hammered away. There you see on your left, Bubba, the head of security for IHW, making sure no one gets hurt. Of course, except both of these competitors who will not be feeling well come tomorrow morning. The in here fan saying, come on, Billy. I, 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 I doubt anybody in this building tonight is cheering for Cameron Cage. Um, and not necessarily because they hate Cameron Cage. I would th say it's more because they hate Mr. Late Night, his manager. Uh, anybody who associates themselves with Mr. Late Night is usually not that great um, of, a, of a fan favorite, to say the least. Billy McNeil, though, definitely... Uh, tried and true with the fans as one of the best. He's up to three. Cameron Cage is up to three. If he makes it to that fourth turnbuckle, it's over. Now, McNeil, he's going to wrap his body around that bottom rope. He's got to. And the best Cage is going to do is flop there like a fish. He's not going to get to that last turnbuckle. But with McNeil, he's got to... McNeil's got to find a way to get him to get Cage back to himself uh, because if he goes towards Cage, Cage can go for that turnbuckle. Now Davis says the count is off. Now McNeil is going for the, the turnbuckles. He's up to two. And Cage cuts him off. You know, it's been years since I've seen a chain match in this style. Probably about eight years. Probably back when Eddie Guerrero lost the world's championship to John Layfield. So it has been a while. Cage is choking the hell out of Billy McNeil. The, such a dangerous thing about these matches is 
if you get that if you get that blood cut off to your head for a, a long time, you're not going to come out of this the same. And because it's no disqualification, um, the referee has not a lot of discretion to enforce. And Billy McNeil, look at those rights to Cameron Cage, seesawing back and forth. He's stuck in a rut. But McNeil's got to get him back in the ring to touch those corners. Knee to the head. And it turns Cage for a loop. Right out here on this hardwood floor at the V Bar and Bowling Alley here in Redbud, Illinois. Tiny little town in Red is Redbud, Illinois, uh, between Chester and East Carondelet, Dupo. It's quite a place. Fish mailboxes as far as the eye can see. And McNeil needs to keep his concentration here. And he has completely ignored his opponent. He is not facing off against Mr. Late Night. He is facing off against Cameron Cage. And he needs to realize that. And Cameron Cage is making him pay for it. McNeil is temporarily out of it. He is not all there. And Cameron Cage, he's going to hoist McNeil on his back. Cage hits one, and McNeil hits one as well. Look at that. He, he did it again. He turned it around, and McNeil hits it right behind him. Well, McNeil, number three, perhaps. McNeil is holding on. Oh, put your hand down. Whoa, look at that, a cold breaker style knee. Whoa, is that it? No, no, the count started over. That was one. Cage is flat on his back. He's not responding. McNeil hits three. Will McNeil hit four? And he jumps for it. And he retains the title. Billy McNeil, exhausted in the corner, but he has retained the title and the fans are on their feet. Wait a second. Mephisto is in the ring. Mephisto going at it again. And McNeil's ready for him this time. He had to have known this was going to happen. Oh, come on. All right. So Mephisto doesn't want to face him like a man. Only attacking him from behind. McNeil says, come on. Fans, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.